Good morning and welcome to St. Mary's. Uh, it is the, uh, the last day of July and, uh, and for those of you who are joining us uh, live stream or recorded, uh, this is why I make a point of saying that. But anyway, it's great to have all of you who are here, especially any of you who are here for the first time or the first time in a while or back again. And also uh, welcome those of you who have found us uh, online. It is great to have you with us. We are St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Lakewood, Washington. Um, so I invite you to stand and let us uh, sing our uh, processional song. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called him, 
the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the balls and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities. It consumes their oracle priests and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me. The Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adam? How can I treat you like Zeboim? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy you, Israel, for I am a God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst. I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord, who roars like a lion when he roars. His children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt, like doves from the land of Syria. And I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. Let them you redeem them from the hand of the Lord. He gathered them out of the lands. From the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes. They found no way to the city where they might dwell. They were hungry and thirsty. But their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their He put their feet on a straight path. The Lord was the city where they might dwell. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. And the wonders he has for his children. For he satisfies the thirsty. And the fills the hungry with goodness. Whoever is wise will ponder these things. And consider well the mercies of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, purity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices, and clothe yourselves with the new self which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. But Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Here the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And Jesus said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will hold down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool. This very, your, this very night, your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, live out in us. In all that we are and have yet to become the full mystery of your death and resurrection. Help us to heal all by showing us and teaching us to welcome all, especially the dark guest in our soul. Stretch and transform us by the power of your love, that we may find ourselves and see ourselves in you, in your being. I was a little um, taken aback, I think, at Jesus' words about uh, uh, beware of storing up for yourselves a, uh, a, a warehouse full of the things that you need to sustain you so that you can uh, eat, drink, and be merry as I'm about to retire and uh, pay attention to my uh, retirement accounts and pension and all of that. And what is Jesus saying here? I, I, I was told once that uh, that Jesus taught about money more than anything else. Um, actually, that's not true, I have come to see. He taught about the kingdom of God more than he taught about anything else. But Jesus used money as a way to, to talk about um, those things that are important and that, that influence our spiritual life and how that there are, there are connections between the two. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking, you know, and someone noticed uh, uh, in my preaching these last few weeks that I've been more sort of reflective, and I'm really feeling that today. What is Jesus saying to me at this, at this point in my life and, and, uh, and where we are? I'm very grateful for the, both the gospel lesson and the lesson from Paul uh, to the Colossians that, that talk about how to live faithfully. And, and I have de dedicated my life to trying to live a, a faithful life, and yet there are, there are certainly challenges and, and needs to, to, to be awake to and, and things to, to look at carefully uh, in my life always about what does it mean to live in a way that we, we experience grace. God did, or Jesus did talk a lot about money, and, and often what he what he did in his teaching about money was contrasting the way we look at money with the, the um, which is out of scarcity and, uh, um, and, and how we deal with scarcity with the economy of grace and love in which there is abundance. And in fact, again and again, what Jesus shows us is that when we're thinking about grace and love, there is all that we could ever need waiting for us. And not only that, it is the kind of thing that we receive grace, we receive love, most often as we give it away. 
So the paradox that, that I see Jesus is talking about is this, this notion of building bigger bonds and beware of, of greed uh, in all kinds is, is, a, is a contrast is that it's not wrong to pay attention to pension funds and retirement accounts and to, and to, and to see that we have what we, we need, but, um, but our spiritual life does not work the same way that, that we receive by, by giving, by emptying ourselves, we receive. And then it seems Jesus invites us to take that, um, that lesson back to issues of money and, uh, and possessions. And I'm, I'm grateful as I look back on my life, as I think of practices of generosity, of, of tithing, of, of, uh, of, of, of simplifying, of, of living uh, frugally, of not taking on great debt. Those kinds of things are practices that, that, uh, that are easier to do as I think of myself as having more than just my financial or or uh, physical needs as being important, but my spiritual life and my sense of community enters into all of that. But I have to say, now that I find myself at this stage in my life as I'm preparing to retire, actually to retire again, um, that um, when Jesus talks about uh, that our life is not measured by our abundance and, and our possessions, I'm, I find myself increasingly concerned about issues of consumption, and not just for me, but as I look at the culture in which I live. I heard an expression as I was listening to a podcast the other day called Rhizomatic Systems, and what the person was describing was something that uh, there are some weeds that are rhizomatic systems. You pull up a weed, you kill it here, but yet it, it exists because it has a root system that, that, it, that enables it to pop up in other places. Aspen groves, for instance, are rhizomatic systems that are a single uh, living entity that exists as a grove of, of trees. And I think of our spiritual life more and more uh, as being a rhizomatic system that my life is interdependent with the lives of others, that, that I am part of a body of Christ. But now I'm increasingly also seeing, perhaps, of, of sin as a rhizomatic system. And particularly, I look at consumption. We are today the sixth day of, of uh, extreme temperatures over, over 60. That, as I understand, is a record for the Puget Sound area. And to some degree, and I, I certainly believe that it has to do uh, with um, climate change, that has to do with carbon in the air. And I look at, at uh, my own patterns in life. Um, curiously, I was, my father was a geologist, and I, I remember vividly, he was a board of, uh, of, a, of a school in Colorado that put in a solar pow powered building and he was just incredulous. How would you, why would you do that when you're in sight of some of the richest coal beds that exist in the West? Um, and uh, little did he know, but I do know uh, that, that that in fact has consequences that perhaps we're feeling today, very literally, very, uh, uh, in a very real way, tangibly. So, I am hearing this passage of Jesus talking about beware of greed as having a subtext of beware of consumption. Consumption uh, used to be a, a disease that people were sent to places to, uh, uh, to try and find some healing, uh, but yet was often um, uh, uh, fatal in the long term. Well, we continue to be afflicted with consumption that may have some dire consequences. And, and so I, I would like to think that my faith, our faith, has perhaps some resources that might help us. And I think it does. One is the recognition that, um, that we can find uh, transformation of life as we, uh, 
as we find grace to help us in, in our need. One of the struggles I come up against as I look at my lifestyle and the lifestyle that I share in this, in this nation and, and in this world is, is that when I, that, that I can become a polar, or, um, paralyzed by shame and guilt, that, that, there are, that, that I recognize there are problems and yet uh, guilt and shame prevent me from not, not only acting but even thinking about things. As, as I should. And so part of it is to recognize that uh, um, there are some tools that help us. I'm grateful for the tools of uh, the 12-step recovery movement. And if I look at our, uh, at consumption as, as an addiction, uh, then I recognize that the 12-step program that begins by a person admitting that I am powerless over my consumption and my life has become unmanageable might be a good first step. And then secondly, to uh, I came to believe that there is a power greater than myself that can restore me to sanity. And then thirdly, to turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand God is, is something that, that, that may be instructive as I look at trying to change my lifestyle and our lifestyle. And then I think of uh, the, the image that Jesus has of build bigger barns uh, is, is the recognition that are my spiritual barns sufficient? Is that not what I should be building? And recognizing that the practices that we engage in are helping to build, might help build the bigger barns so that it is easier to do those kinds of things that may amend my life to, uh, to live in a more sustainable way. And so I think of the practices of, of common prayer, of, of generosity, of, of uh, prayer and study, of, of uh, compassion and outreach to others, of, of welcoming the stranger. Those kinds of things that open me to the experience of grace often on a, on a day to day level. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. And so then when I'm doing that, I'm more able to hear as. Uh, even in my own family, more and more people are uh, uh, I'm now in the minority of, of one who is uh, uh, eating a carnivore, that uh, the rest of my family are, are eating plant-based diets and, and recognizing that actually for the health of the world, that is in, in fact a, a profound and powerful step towards, towards more sustainable living. There are all kinds of other things that, that many of us may know, but I'm just eager and want to be part of a church that can talk about those things, even as we talk about the, uh, the need to find grace and love as we share with one another. But let us take a moment and sit in, uh, in prayer. Uh, I invite you to repeat these words from uh, Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be.
We believe in one God, the Father, and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came in heart and through hearing, and was saved man. For our sake, he was crucified and was not the slaughter. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven. And to see it at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and in his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped for our life. He has spoken to your prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and our Son Church. We acknowledge our baptism and the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord of God. Amen. Humble and eternal God, protect us from greed and our attachment to worldly things, that we may be rich toward you and share Christ's glory with the world. We give you thanks, O God, for you are good. Gracious God, our lives are hidden with Christ in you. Lead your church with cords of human kindness and with bands of love, and clothe your children with the new self of the risen one, that we may seek the things that are above and know your glory. Remember especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Greg, Brian, and Melissa, our bishops, and Andrew and Ed, our priests. We pray for the uh, bishops of the Anglican Communion, uh, meeting for Lambeth Conference, and pray that they would sing the hymn, we just say, in Christ there is no east and west. We give you thanks, O God, for you are good. Generous one, rid the earth of anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language. Give wisdom to the powerful and wealthy, that they may refrain from building their own wealth and prefer to become rich for God. Remember especially President Biden, Governor Inslee, all elected and public servants, those serving in the armed forces, first responders, and those who labor for the common good. We give you thanks, O God, for you are good. Look upon the world, O benevolent one, and gather your people from east and west, from north and south, that guided by your wisdom, we may no longer be divided by nation, race, custom or class, but embrace our unity in you. We give you thanks, O God, for you are good. Your compassion grows warm and tender, O loving one. You bend down to feed us and lift us to your cheeks. You teach your children to walk and put our feet on a straight path. We thank you for your mercy revealed in this community and for the wonders you do for your children. We give you thanks, O God, for you are good. You satisfy the thirsty and fill the hungry with good things. Hear our petitions as we ask divine presence and healing in those for whom we pray, especially Bonnie, Kathy, Annette, Mary, Terry, Doris, Eric, Nancy, Linda, Bill, Sylvia, 
Hey, Father Ed, Doug, Ada, Judy B, and Bruce. We pray for the people of the Philippines who are victims of the earthquake in Dublin, Utah. We give thanks for all that God has given us out of the abundance of God's heart. We have died and our life is hidden with Christ in God. May all who have died be revealed with Christ in glory. We give you thanks, O God, for you are good. Your mercy is Guide us with your wisdom, O generous God, that we may resist the worldly temptation of greed, wealth, and power, and treasure only those things that are eternal and imperishable through Jesus Christ our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory and everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for St. Mary. Great and holy God, we look with favor on your servants and all us blessed. Pour out your grace on St. Mary's Church. Open our doors to welcome you. Open our minds to understand you. Open our hearts to love you. Raise up the rector who will care for your people. Deliver us from our ministries. on you, give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be all with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
morning. Good morning. And welcome. I am Andrew Cooley, the interim rector, and it is a uh, uh, great joy to welcome all of you here, and especially any who might be here for the first time or the first time in a while. Um, uh, those of you uh, both online and, and here, um, if you are visiting, I invite you to fill out a, um, a pew card. We had someone come last week who was uh, the first time here, and yet she had been watching online for many weeks and was really excited to, uh, to be part of the congregation. Uh, that may be kind of a new normal for, uh, for the way people experience churches, and, uh, and, and this person is not the only one who has come into our midst <laughs> through first uh, finding us online. Um, if you are uh, visiting uh, and would like to uh, be connected, we would be grateful for a card or to uh, connect via the, uh, uh, the, the code on the back of the bulletin to uh, let us uh, get you into our uh, mailing system and, and enable us to uh, reach out and thank you for being with us. Uh, so thank you for doing that. Um, as far as announcements, there are a lot of uh, transitions that are going on at St. Mary's. And so we have several things to say about some of the transitions. And Ginny, uh, we'll start with you. I'm here as your search committee liaison. Even though it feels like we've done nothing but sit on our hands, we've actually been busy. We've been formulating the kinds of questions we need to ask applicants. We finally have applicants. The diocese has looked through all of the materials. They have uh, spoken with all of the applicants. And uh, this week, we will be meeting with the canon of the ordinary. We will receive the information and we'll begin to be able to screen applicants for um, our position of rector. That doesn't mean we can get someone immediately. Uh, it usually takes a little while for them to decide they want us, and then it takes a little while for them to leave where they are and arrive where we are. So we will definitely have somebody uh, in the near future uh, rather than the far future, but it will be the future. So please continue to pray for us. It's most important. Your prayers are critical to finding the right director for St. Mary's Church. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy Collins, uh, would you please come forward? So I'm uh, I'm here uh, on behalf of others that will, I'll ask to come up and join me shortly, but uh, we're. Uh, I, I like to call us the worship team. You know, some people call a band, call us the band. Actually, I've been in a band and it sounds a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Emily, Allison, Dwayne, John, Steve, Abe, and others who have uh, worked with us under the leadership of uh, Patty Lentz. And Patty, if you could come up. While Patty's coming up, I'll just let you know that uh, she has a role that is non-trivial, and for those of you that haven't uh, been in a group like ours, uh, you may not uh, you may not recognize that. You know, before we even begin to prepare for a service like today, Patty has to select, uh, propose to the uh, the rector or the uh, the officiant, uh, and then adapt the songs based on how the officiant would like them to be adapted, and then she turns around and sends each of us sheet music and typically there's three to five versions for the instruments and the vocals uh, uh, of each of them and then, and then a YouTube example for us to listen to the songs so that we will come somewhat prepared. Now that's the next thing which the rest of us uh, uh, join Patty, you know, we have to show up and uh, we're expected to have done a level of rehearsal, you know, you can't, uh, you can't do this from a standing start so I tried it a couple of times myself and was really embarrassed. Uh, but we have vocal and, and uh, uh, instrumental skills that each one of us brings. Some of us bring more than uh, more than one set of skills. And then uh, when we start preparing, rehearsing, you know, we get coached on things like enunciation so we can be understood, like being on key, like being on tempo. And then when we've demonstrated a certain amount of proficiency, our leader will pick a spot and say, I think that would sound best a cappella, which means that we are 
tuned up, you know? We've done our best with Patty's leadership to make a joyful noise to the Lord. And uh, I'll tell you before I stop singing that the communion music is a favorite of Patty's and we've learned of her mother's. So this is uh, one that you can uh, join in, in giving thanks to the Lord for Patty. Patty, uh, perhaps you'd like to tell us a little bit about your next chapter? Thank you. I, I didn't prepare anything. I didn't expect this, but this is a, a great honor. Thank you so much. Um, it's been a blessing and an honor to be here um, to serve you. Uh, my next adventure is in Vancouver, Washington. I've accepted a position. I'm a choir director um, by day, and so <laughs> that's uh, my, my main job is uh, public school choir directing. And so I've accepted a position in Woodland, Washington, and we'll be moving um, to the Vancouver area to um, lead them in song. It's high school and middle school, so I'm really excited about leading high school choirs. I'm just really grateful. I have really seen the musicianship of, of the band grow and their joy in offering music grow. But where I see that then is all of you. I see a, a sense of embracing and participating in the music to a level I didn't before. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Um, I'd like to offer a prayer that's in our, uh, in our prayer book. O oh God, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be ever present with your servants who seek through art and music to perfect the praises offered by your people on earth, and grant to them, and Patty especially, even now, glimpses of your beauty, and make them worthy at length to behold it unveiled forevermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, before you sit down, I want to get a picture of you with your your team there. Okay, move in. <laughs> We're good. Good. Excellent. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to Elena to come forward. Um, we have. Uh, in two weeks, on the uh, the 14th of August, uh, our celebration of St. Mary's Day, and that is a time for a picnic. And uh, and so, Elena, help us uh, make that work. Well, we do want to invite everyone to join us after the church service on Sunday, August 14th, for our picnic to celebrate St. Mary's and to say farewell to, to Father Andrew. There. Um, the vestries will provide burgers and hot dogs, and there are sheets in the narthex, in the center of the narthex on that table, for you to sign up to attend. We want you to have some idea of how many people are coming. And also, if you want to contribute some food, uh, there's also sign-up sheets for that. So, um, we hope all of you can come. Look, looking forward to it. Thank you. It will be a time to gather to say those things of, of farewell as, as I'll be retiring, but my last Sunday won't be until the end of August. Um, but next Sunday is another transition as, uh, as Father Ed uh, will, be, uh, will be departing uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, St. Mary's. And so Father Ed next Sunday will preside and preach. Uh, I'll be away. And, uh, and then there will be a time after the service also to, uh, to celebrate and recognize uh, Father Ed. But since this is my last time to be with you in this, uh, in this service, Ed, I want to say what a blessing you have been to me and how grateful I am for, uh, for your presence and your, your many years of service to St. Mary's. Transitions yet? Are there any who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries or events in your life that are noteworthy for which you would like to receive a blessing? An anniversary. Number nine? Very good. Isabel, a birthday? A, a lady's birthday. Okay. 
but I'm 95 now. Yeah. Yeah. Peggy was just telling me how um, she just had her driver's license renewed, yeah. and so she had, she had been held down for a while. But now uh, we we'll see her again. It's great to have you here, Peggy, and all of you. Let us pray together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in your hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I have one more thing that I'd like to say, and that is uh, to recognize uh, your generosity, uh, uh, which enables St. Mary's to, uh, to be a voice and a presence uh, for you, for one another, and into the community. Uh, there is an offering plate in the back of the church, and there is a means on our website to make a safe and secure donation. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Thank you.
spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Alleluia. Come. The table of bread and wine has now been made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all those who love him. It is the table of fellowship with the poor and the suffering with whom Jesus identifies. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more, you who have been to this table often and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites you to meet him here.
Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May your minds be set on the things that are above, renewed in knowledge according to the image of your Creator. May your life be hidden with Christ in God, revealed with Him in glory, for Christ is all in all. May the Holy Spirit guard your hearts from greed and make you rich toward God, clothed with your new self, safe and secure among the eternal treasures. And may God's blessing be with you, Christ's peace be with you, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit be with you and sustain you always. Amen. Amen. and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.